those of you that are dialing, booking appointments, um, understand there's a big difference between like dialing all day and taking all day to dial, right? And most of y'all, I love you, but you take all day to dial. You don't actually dial all day, you know? And it's like, for me, I think if you have your phone, right? I'm gonna teach y'all how I do this. I did it for myself, I do it with agents every day in my office. We have a two dial days in my office every week. I get people that come in and they complain that I only book so many appointments and I'm like, give me your phone. And I scroll down to the bottom. Like if you have an iPhone and you scroll, go to your like call history, scroll all the way to the bottom, that's a hundred, that stores a hundred, okay? If you're in this business trying to sell or build and that's not like earlier today at the bottom, you ain't calling enough people. Does that make sense? Most people that I do this, go look at yours now. It'll say like last Friday, you know, January 3rd, whatever, it's, it's not good. Whereas on a dial day, at any given time, the bottom of your list should be no more than two or three hours ago. Any given time during the day, you're dialing. You can also look at your start time, right? So every day you dial, start looking at what time you started. I like to start at 7.30 a.m. That was my start time dialing. I booked a lot of appointments then. Um, and I challenge people to all the time. People are like, that's early. I'm like, no, like 3 a.m. is early. 7.30, like you ever been outside at 7.30? The sun's out, cars are driving, birds are chirping. It ain't early. You know, call people. Um, it's nuts. And then the biggest, the biggest gotcha that you have to look at when you're dialing, again, look at your phone. If you look, at, if you look past days, it doesn't show it. But if you're in a current day, like if I go to today, First call, and I'm not dialing leads if nobody's confused. So this example is gonna work, but it's not because, but today my first call is at 7.30 a.m., just a call. It tells you what time your next call was. Most agents who dial, like my next call was 8.12. That's pretty standard for an agent dialing. <laughs> right? Next one was 8.15, then 8.42, then 9.37. It's like someone stole my phone and dialed today. One of the broke agents. But like if you look at that, because the, 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 the gap, what happens is with agents, is they say I just dialed for four hours and only booked two appointments, but they only made like 32 calls. I did it, I lived that world. And this is the way I judged myself, as I started looking at this and I went, I should have a call at 7.30, 7.31, 7.32, 7.33, maybe someone picks up and I'm on a call for three minutes. 7.36, 7.39, so it shouldn't, there shouldn't be four, five, six, eight, 10, 12 minute gaps between calls. You know, and if you can learn to con condense the time, you'll actually dial all day. You know, and if you go like, how long does a dial really take? It's a, like a minute on average, because it doesn't take a minute to ring and not pick up. And a majority don't pick up, that's the game. But if you go like, I, I get a lot of people tell me they're willing to do whatever it takes for their family. Work eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 hour days, right? A lot of y'all probably would say you'd do that. All right, if you go, I don't know, some, we can help do some math. If a dial took a minute, means you should be able to do 60 of those suckers every hour. Pretty simple. I don't know 60 times 16, can someone do that? It's a lot. Whatever that number is, 800, 900, I don't know what it is. 960? So if you're willing to work 16 hours a day and literally work all day, you could do 960 dials. So when you come back home and complain to your spouse and go like, eh, I dialed all day and only booked four, and you made 112, congrats, you worked two hours. Good job. You know, and for me, like, in my world, I've been timed on jobs. You know, I've had to do things, pack so many boxes in a truck per hour, things like that, so this is just how I judged me. You do you. You know, if it makes you feel good to say you dialed all day when you didn't, I, it is what it is. <laughs> You know, and I, dude, I lived that world. I did that to myself and it affected my family. And when I started taking things seriously and going, I say I'll work all day, but I wasn't actually working all day. I remember looking at leads, man, and I would like quote them before I called them. Like I'd look up the pricing, like 72 year old, $180,000 mortgage. Whoa, what's that gonna cost? And I'd price it out before I dialed them. I'm like, what am I doing? So I had to learn how to like a, approach this properly. Um, the other thing, if you aren't triple dialing, please do it. Meaning call people back to back to back. So if I call Cody and he don't pick up, I call him immediately. Again, he don't pick up the second time, I call him immediately a third time, right away. Why? Dude, you, most people don't pick up numbers they don't know now. If someone calls you again, 
What's the thought process? I mean, I call Cody once, he looks at it and goes, eh, red button. I call him again, he's bound to go like, huh, I wonder who that is. Right? Maybe he picks up, maybe he don't. Did I call a third time? What's probably going through your head? Someone needs you. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to play the psychology of this thing. And for me, what I like to do, I'm, I like to dial aggressively. Most people, like, when you're, trying to, when, you're, when you're dialing leads, the goal is what? Most people say to book appointments. I go, my goal was to get people to pick up. Because I can't book appointments if I don't get people to pick up. So my deal is let me get as many people to pick up as possible. And then when they pick up, now I can work. Because until they answer, I can't do anything. So I, instead of calling, if you say have 100 leads, most people take all their leads, they put them in one stack, and they dial through them. They call Cody first, he don't pick up. They may never call him again. Maybe it's in a day and a half, maybe it's in eight hours, whatever it is. Whereas I like to take stacks and break them into like 25s, stacks of 25 leads at a time, and work them. So I'll work a stack of 25 for two or three hours. So I'll take 25 leads, dial the first one, Cody, three times, assuming he doesn't pick up. Dial him three times, flip it over, go to the next lead. Dial through all 25, my hope is, I don't know, five pick up, four tell me to pound dirt, I book one. But that doesn't take me long with 25. I then immediately flip that stack of 20 over that didn't pick up the first time, and I triple dial them all again, right? Same thing. So now I've called Cody six times in, I don't know, first hour, right? Go through those 20, five pick up, four tell me to pound dirt, book another one. Now I got 15 left, I triple dial them one more time. Now I'm back at it 20, 30 minutes later this time because there's only 15 leads. So I'd have called Cody if he didn't pick up nine times in an hour and a half, two hours. That's my approach. That's the way I like to do it. I challenge agents to do it. It allows you to get more dials in per day. And again, it's like, if I said, if Vegas were putting odds on it, the way I just explained to dial, or the way you currently dial, which one would have better odds of people picking up? So you pick. You wanna go with the odds or against the odds? With your comfort zone, or you wanna do with what works? And the, the willingness to dial that much typically means you don't normally have to because you'll get a lot of people to pick up but I'm willing to do it. Um, the other thing, people think like negative, like what if they're mad, what if this, what if that? And I'm like, we tend to put this like what if negative stuff in things and everything we do. We go, what if, and there's a negative statement after. And I'm like, what if they answer? Or like, what if he says come over and I cover him for like 200 bucks a month tomorrow? Or what if, God forbid, something was gonna happen to the client and because I called them so aggressively, I was able to go over and sell them life insurance, and he got hit by a bus next week, but now he's covered. Like, what if that aggressive dialing saved the family? You know what I mean? But so many people want to put a negative solely so they don't have to do the work. And it's an excuse where you, like, try to validate why you're not wanting to put in the extra time. And the other thing I like to do is mess with my, myself, and almost everybody tells me how they handle this. Like, if you think of the person you love the most in the world, right? Whoever that is, I always use Maddox, he's 10, he's my youngest, my youngest kid, and I go, if one of the leads had Maddox, would I be worried about, how, and, and, and the only way to save Maddox, someone had him, one of the leads had him, I had to figure out which one, by calling all the leads. Okay, that was the only way to save Maddox. Would I care what time I started calling them? Could I possibly call them too early? Would I give a crap if I called them nine times in a row? How about 15 times in a row? How about 40? If they were mad, would you care? So you choose to care when it's not your kid on the line. You know what I mean? And for me, it's like, so we have a control, so we can choose whether or not we go like, oh, I, I, what if they're mad? Like, you're choosing to think negatively. You're choosing to put emotion behind it. Whereas to me, I'm just like finding ways to not have emotion tied to it, because I know I'm doing it for the right reasons. And the reality is, my family was trapped, and this business saved them. So me to get down lines like that allowed me to do a lot of good things for my family in the last 10 years. Um, the next thing I'm gonna get into is um, if you will learn to judge your activity the way you currently judge your results, your world will change. Meaning, the lead hung up on me, you're pissed. If you would get as mad as you do when a lead hangs up on you, is that you don't start dialing at 7.30 in the morning, like if you're as mad at yourself for not starting early as you are when someone hangs up on you, you'll be different. Does that make sense? Like when a, when a client cancels, when they reschedule, when the chargeback happens, when a roll-up happens, all these negative things you get frustrated by. 
Imagine if you got frustrated because you only ran 10 appointments this week, or because you didn't buy enough leads, or because you didn't dial all day, or you didn't recruit enough people. Or you, didn't, you know what I mean? All the things we're supposed to be doing, activity-wise, if y'all would judge how well you do there daily, and stop worrying so much about the result. You're so, everyone's so pissed about the result, and I'm like, but the input sucked. Of course the result sucked. You know, and we get so emotionally caught up on the back end. I'm like, why are, we, why are you not pissed at yourself for not putting in the work? Right. You know, and it, it, I'm telling you, it will change your world because I had to have that for, I'm, I was 37 years old and broke as a joke. And I'm like, dude, I'm the only one that's been here for all 37 of them. Like, it's gotta be me. You know, and I, I started holding myself more accountable. The other thing I mentioned briefly earlier, um, I work, I started to work like I was being timed. I've had two jobs in my career where I was literally timed, meaning I, I worked in a warehouse where I had to pick up so many boxes, put them on a pallet, and load them in a truck. If I didn't put so many boxes on a pallet per hour during the overnight shift, I got written up. If I got written up enough times, I got fired. I also worked in a call center briefly on like a cell phone call center where you call for like help to bitch about your bill. And I had to answer the, answer the phone for people calling in to complain. And uh, if I wasn't on for eight hour shift, it was, if I wasn't speaking to someone, 95% of that eight hours, I got in trouble. I had to be timed. So for me in this business, I started giving myself credit for every dial was one minute of work. Every appointment I sat was one hour of work. And that's the way I did my week. And I talk about running 30 appointments a week. It's how we run our business. And most people think that's nuts. I'm like, if I run, if I schedule 30, most people, if I say, how many of those will you sit? The most common answer is 20. That makes sense? One hour each, that's 20 hours. And if I book, I don't know, three appointments an hour. It took me 10 hours to do that. So I got 10 hours on top of my 20 I was in the field. It's 30 hours. And most of y'all ain't run 30 appointments. So I have a lot of people that are like, I ran 12 last week. Would you sit, eight? Yeah. Well, how long is your average appointment? An hour. You worked eight hours and you're mad. At the result or that you'd worked eight hours? You know, and it's like you have to hold yourself accountable and go like, if, if you're doing that, all good. Understand this is the best part-time gig on earth. But most agents, I've talked to thousands and thousands and thousands of agents over the last 10 years, and most of them, if I give an hour credit per appointment sat and a minute per dial, most agents I've met work less than the Walmart greeter. That's like 84. And it's like you have to, you have to spend your week paying attention to what counts. Like a lot of people go, yeah, but I drive all over the place. Dude, I drove all over the place to go to my accounting job and I didn't get credit for those hours. I still had to work 40 when I got there. So you want to give yourself credit for drive time? Knock yourself out. But it don't count. It don't, it's, it's worthless. So for me, I had to start holding myself accountable and doing this like I was being timed at all, all times. And the only time that my timer was going was when the phone was ringing or I was sitting in a kitchen table. If you do remote stuff, all good. If you do something similar, adapt it to what you do. The concept is there, though. If, you, if you're honest with yourself, most people will figure out that they aren't actually putting in the hours. And if you go through the week, I think, there's, I think there's 168 hours in a week, almost positive, right? And if you work 40 hours, which we just determined most people aren't, right? And you sleep eight hours a day, which is 56, right? And if you're broke, you shouldn't be. You still, it's 96 hours, you still have 72 hours left. 72. After you work 40 and sleep eight hours a night, you have 72 hours left in the week. What are you doing with your time? Where does it go? What do you do with it? Pay attention to your time and be honest with yourself and you'll go like, do you know what you could do with 72 hours? After you work full time and sleep eight hours a night. That's a ass ton of time. You can, you can do some damage in this world when you realize how much time we all have. And the reality is y'all are doing something with it. You know? So be honest with yourself, look at your time, judge yourself the right way for the right things, and just do more. And then with time, you'll get good. That will happen too. So many people wanna get good first. And I'm like, can you just work more? 
And with time and reps and all that, I promise this thing gets easier. And you will have your time and you will have more money than you can ever imagine, especially if you go help a bunch of other people and be honest about it and not worry about if you're hurting feelings and just tell people the truth. And y'all can go out and kill it and have the biggest year you've ever wanna have. If it works, hit me up on social, tag me, post. Hope, I love hearing the stories. If I can help in any other way, y'all let me know. Peace out. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. One of the best things I ever did was, I actually sent emails to 10 people who I very much trusted. That my dad, um, my grandpa, you know, you look at things like fellow coworkers, previous.